All right, welcome to today's course. Today we are going to start the Modern Real Estate Principles and Practice, the 20th edition. That is the book that you should have with you. This is the live course. However, as you can tell, uh, due to the issues that we're having currently, we are uh, socially distancing ourselves. So a lot of the intro stuff that we that I normally would give in a live class is going to be irrelevant. Um, I'm sure that you guys at home have your own bathroom and I'm sure you know where it's at. So I don't have to guide you to that. Um, your coffee bar, which normally is in our uh, school is now at your house. So feel free to partake of all the free coffee you want in, in your house there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the course. The course is comprised of 21 chapters and there are three tests throughout the course, all right? And in your online, you will notice it goes like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, test one, eight through 14, test two, and then to the end of the book, test three. Now, here's something I wanna make very plain because I get a lot of statements about this. On these three exams, you need to score an average of 13, all right, uh, 13, what the heck? You need to score an average score of 75. Now, please understand that means average. That is not a 75 on every test. If you got a 70 on your first one and an 80 on your second one, that is an average of 75. So if you don't do or get the score that you want on the first exam, Please don't send me an email going, I failed the first exam. There is no such thing as failing the first exam. It just gives you an indication of what you need to get on the next couple scores, all right? There's also an attendance component. You have to attend 80% of the classes. That means you have to be online with us by 9 a.m. The magic number is four. What that is telling you is you can miss four classes and still pass the attendance component of this course. Now I'll give you a little hint. You miss four classes, that's a lot of information to miss. Probably won't do as well as you wanted to if you miss all four of those classes, all right? Couple other things just so that you catch on. In the chapters above us, up there, there is a link to register for the state exam and a phone number when the time comes for you to register for your test, or you can either do it online or you can call them and schedule, okay? Now, we know the end date of this course, so in theory, you could go ahead and call and schedule your test now. If something happens and we miss the end date, you can call and adjust your date for the test that you want, all right? There's another chapter up there that talks about getting on the Dearborn Q Bank. Q stands for questions, and you guys get this as part of your course. You have to click the link. It will take you to another section uh, created by Dearborn, and in that Dearborn, you will register another account. It is not our school, so your school account won't work over there. You must create a new account. You will then have to purchase the 20th edition QBank. When you log out or when you check out with the purchase, you will notice that the amount is zero. So you have to go through the process of purchasing it at $0. Make sure that you get the 20th edition and not the 19th edition. Not a lot of difference in the information, just the order in which it's presented. So I mean, you're not gonna die and blow up with a trauma, head trauma or anything like that. If you choose the 19th, just go back in and choose the 20th because they're both gonna be absolutely free, all right? So before we begin, do we have any questions? All right, cool. Here we go. We're gonna start in your book on page two. 
right there in chapter one. We're going to talk about the business of real estate and all the different specialities that are contained inside of this. What we are going to mainly discuss is this word conveyance. Conveyance is the transfer of real property between two people. Typically, if we're involved, it's going to be called the buyer and the seller. Those are the two people that we're going to be dealing with. Now, you're going to see later on, we could also call that the landlord and the tenant if we're in the property management or the leasing world. But either way, we're going to be talking about the transfer, which is what this word means, or the conveyance of real property. Now, the transfer of real property is big business. In 2017 or 2018, 2017, there were $14 trillion of value exchanged hands between people in the United States. That's more value than was on the big board stock exchange. So that tells you there is a lot, a lot, a lot of transfers that happen in the real estate world. So there on page two, we're going to start with all of the people that would be involved in this transfer, okay? The first one you notice is called a broker or brokerage. This is the area that you and I are going to go into. Brokering simply means bringing buyers and sellers together. We've got boat brokers, pawn brokers, drug brokers, mortgage brokers, real estate brokers, all of that. And all we do is bring a buyer and a seller together. That is what the definition of brokerage is. Now in your book, remember this book is written for every state in the United States. So they use a couple terms that can get confusing when you start going through this book because they, they don't really interchange them, but you guys think they interchange them when you start, when you're first learning, all right? So they use the term salesperson and the term broker in the book. The thing that you need to understand about that is that in some states, they use the two licensing system. Like Florida, Florida still uses the two-tier system. Indiana, we only have the one tier, all right? So they use this word salesperson and broker to mean the two tiers. Salesperson would be the entry level and the broker would be the advanced level, all right? Now in Indiana, we are all brokers, even though you may be coming in at an entry level with experience. So we call all of our people brokers in Indiana. Florida, when someone says I'm a salesperson, you know that that is the lower tier or the first tier. And the book consistently uses the word salesperson and broker. You're going to find that there is another word that we will get to called a managing broker. And that is, for lack of a better word, the boss of a company. And there's only one of those for every company. We'll talk more about that when we get there. So understand that the word salesperson and broker can be used. So just understand, generally when they talk about all of them together, they will usually say licensees to mean both categories if they're talking about both of them. And like I said, in Indiana, we all are brokers. When you guys pass your exam, you will get a broker's level license. That is the exact same license I have. You guys are going to get the same license that I have. The only difference is that I will have 20 years experience and you're brand new, but our license level is exactly the same. It is a license required activity in every state to broker property. 
in Indiana, if you buy, sell, trade, lease, exchange, manage, list, rent, consult, or refer, don't worry about writing those down. We'll get them all later. You have to have a real estate license to, in order to help a third party person. So it is a license required activity. The second person in that book there is called an appraiser or the appraisal. The appraiser is an estimated value by an educated person and they are licensed in every state and they actually work for the bank, all right? So an appraiser, while he may be paid for by a buyer, it is actually working or they are actually working for the bank. They are there to protect the bank's interest so that when the bank loans money to a buyer and the buyer ponies up this house as collateral, the bank knows that that house is the value that they're loaning. That's the main key purpose of an appraisal. So they are an educated person. Now, they are the one person in this group on this these pages here that you will see that you will have virtually little to no interaction with, all right? The reason is the banks do not want you to potentially interfere with the appraiser and possibly sway his opinion. They do not want you to go, hey, you know, Bob, at this house of praises, there's a set of Colts tickets in there for you. So you have little to no interaction with these guys. Virtually the only interaction you're going to get is the phone call saying, hey, I got hired to do the appraisal on the property. How do I get in? And that's about it. All right. So I only know one appraiser only because he's a friend of mine. The reality is I've been in the business 20 years. I couldn't name three to save my life because we don't interact with them on any kind of basis. We see the report, we get asked to get in the house and that's it, all right? 